Welcome to Let's Play Gran Turismo 3, episode 53, re-recording of Royce 1. Because apparent as it might be, I am probably one of the fucking worst segment recorders in the world. Because I originally recorded the first race and then I discovered when I was transferring the files from my USB over to my laptop, I deleted the fucking footage by mistake, even though I was pretty certain I did record this originally. But it was only the first race that I did not have. So I'm just gonna re-record race one, because fortunately I do have the other video files as well, obviously. This is only the second time where I have fucked something up in this game, and so Let's head down to the professional league. I've got all the tuning I need, and so let's head over to race number one. Okay, so let's try this again and see if I can make this the exact same race that I won on my first attempt. Because even though I do have the replay footage, obviously, I do not have anything else. So let's just get this shit over with. Yep, assists off. I've got all the tuning I need. Also got the super slicks. Yep. Everything appears to be in order to be in order, so let's do this. For the second time, we are recording race one. And obviously, I'm trying to make this as similar to the first attempt as possible. And hopefully this is the exact field that I competed against in my first attempt of race one, even though obviously these will not be the exact same results. And already I'm off to a reasonable start, even though inevitably I am getting wheel spin off the rear end, or in other words, being constantly cursed with oversteer at the moment. And where, fortunately for me at least, I am, of course, managing to do a reasonable job at the moment. And obviously, this race, I'm pretty certain, is going to come down to tyre wire. So I decided, instead of just me constantly complaining about how I am probably one of the world's biggest idiots, I officially decided it was probably best for me to just re-record this because, obviously, I need a bigger hard drive, and that's probably what I'm going to be searching for. But yeah, as for the other video files, well, they're basically just going to be... As for the other video files, well, they're basically just going to remain in the segment as per usual, and the Viper was getting really aggressive with me there as we went through turns 1 and 2 before the S curves. Fortunately, I do live to tell the tale, I have survived the calamities that were the first two corners of lap 2, and now I would anticipate I'm probably going to be fighting with the Viper. And where I will probably have to save the replay because... and where I will probably have to save a replay at the exact same venue because obviously this is the footage that I'm probably going to be coming up with. Because even though I do have everything else intact, the one thing I do not have intact is the fact I'm saying that I am just, well, a shit for brains. And 
Hard as it might be, I will be trying my hardest to show everything else except for the actual footage of the first race because me stupid. And also, furthermore, at the moment, I am still pissed off with myself. Oh, fuck me. But again, there is no way I'm re recording all of the other fucking segments in this. The segments that essentially follow this one. And well, uh, obviously, I probably will mention this before I get into arcade mode, but obviously. It was on my second attempt that I won race one, and this is probably the exact field that I competed against in that race, and obviously I'm hopeful in saying the results here will probably be the same as the results I had in the final finishing order on the first attempt. And I figured this was probably the best way for me to do it without complaining about how much of a dumbass I have been recently. And now I'm basically just hoping that I do manage to get this done properly. And I probably will leave a note at the start of the video explaining what exactly I did incorrectly and also explaining about why exactly I decided to re-record this. Anyways, lap 4 and I'm leading the Viper. And furthermore, yes, I probably will have to save a replay under what actually happened during the segment itself, and I am also pretty certain this will probably be the replay footage I'll use, because I'm pretty much slipping and sliding at the moment here at Apricot Hill, and already I'm starting to build an interval to the Viper, so his tyres must be going off. Furthermore, I'm nearly three seconds faster on that lap, as the gap after four laps has now increased to under 4.3 seconds, and I am still sliding around as fuck at the moment, and I'm deeply hoping that after this I will not fuck this up again, because if I do, then well... I'm going to be probably more than frustrated with myself, in my complete honest opinion. But overall, it was originally on my second attempt, like I said before, that I won this race. And well, what did happen on the first attempt realistically as well? Everyone pitted except for the Zonda, and well obviously, because I had the hard tyres on originally, I too had to pit before the end of the race because the hard tyres were not going to last, and then as a result of that, I ultimately lost on the first attempt originally, and well obviously up to this point, What I can reveal to you is that, well, after this we did manage to complete all of the other international B license events in this game following this event, and furthermore as well as that, well, you'll just have to wait and find out when I upload the other fucking segments. 
hopefully this time my pea brain will not be stupid enough to delete the video footage before I transfer the video file over to the computer itself. And I just overshifted. Sorry, overrived before I shifted. Oh, fuck me. Well, I think it's now safe to say that I probably do have a safe enough margin overall. But yeah, I mean, overall this probably will be the race footage I'll use on this attempt, and obviously, like I said before, I did leave a note at the start of the video explaining how much of an idiot I am, and also explaining how I almost cannot do anything right when it comes to segment recording. The gap has now increased to nearly nine and a half seconds. And I'm deeply hopeful in saying that this will officially be the last time I fuck up a video segment. Because I almost don't know for sure if I can actually forgive myself over everything that's already happened. Hopefully I can in a way, but most of the time I probably won't. It'll probably take at least a few days for me to get a... for me to basically... get over the... internal pain that I feel right now. But at the moment... I'm not... as... infuriated now as I was when I started the video, and I just fucked up at the gravel trap, because I just knew that was going to happen. So to those of you who are wondering how exactly I'm going to do this, well, I'm basically just going to upload this re-recorded file and put it as a part of the segment and then when I've done that you'll basically be able to see the original parts of the other two races I did. And hopefully I will not make the same mistake again. If I do, then I will probably be slapping myself. Just literally saying to myself, God, kill me now, if this happens again. I'm basically just being constantly played on the steer. Anyways, the Viper is in the pits, as of which I already figured that was going to happen. And obviously, I think everyone else up to this point has probably pitted as well. Or, I think most of these AI will probably pit before the end of the race, because they aren't on super slicks. Meanwhile, it is now safe to say that I probably will win this race, so that is exactly what I think is going to happen, and obviously I do not give a fuck about what my original finishing time was, because officially I'm just re-recording the first race, because that's the only video file I lost. The other two video files I have, and obviously 
those two files you will be able to see during the segment itself. Anyways, final lap here at Apricot Hill and by less than a second I was off my fastest lap. And still being constantly played with oversteer, as which that is one thing I predicted was going to happen. And oh, fuck me! Yep. Come on, get out the grass, get out the grass, get out the grass! Okay. <sighs> Fucking hell. I almost thought for sure I was going to save it, but then suddenly, just like that, the inevitable happened. The oversteer got the better of me, and ultimately, I just pretty much counter-steered and then slid into the wall, basically. Now I am even more frustrated with myself. And I'm only hoping I do not cut the chicane this time. Okay, I survived the chicane. And I really don't give a fuck about what my original finishing time was, because ultimately, I fucked up that final lap, and overall, I'm just gonna do this in probably the least stressful way possible. Just basically donating my way across the line, and, well, the final finishing order you will probably see on screen from the actual race itself. Come on, come on. There he is. So in the end of that, I won by 32 seconds over the Viper, then in third it was the Elise. In fourth position, as a result of his second to last lap pit stop was the NSX, then it was the Tommy Kyra in fifth, and then way the fuck behind everyone else, it was the Clio. So, all I can really say about this race once I took the lead is, well, I basically decimated the opposition. As a result of me pretty much using the hardest tyres you can put on a race car in this game. And so that, my friends, was race one. And I think it's fair to say that since I now know what I'm doing for these remaining two races, let's just get through them, and hopefully, on pure pace, I will manage to beat the Zonda. And as I expected, the order has changed again, so both the TBR and the Pakani are officially in this race, and as for the rest of the field, it's pretty much the same. So, the Tommy Kyra ZZS is on the pole, ahead of the TBR, then it is the Pagani Zonda, Z Pagani Zonda C12 in third, NSX is starting fourth, and then in fifth position, on the third row with me is the Clio. Let's head to race number two, and we shall see how we go. Considering I'm pretty confident now that I understand everything, I might be able to win these other two races on my first attempt, possibly. And already diving down the inside, of both the Tommy Kyra and the Zonda, even though he is striking back because he has the superior acceleration. And obviously, since there is a backstretch, I would imagine he will not be preferable in terms of his speed. So, I am down the inside of the Zonda, just had to work that out, and officially. I'm now coming up to fighting the TBR for the lead. 
So the TBR at the moment is, sec is leading this thing. I'm in second. The Zonda is third. Then in fourth, it is the Honda NSX, as of which the Zonda now takes the second position away from me. Then it is the Tommy Kyra in fifth. And then at the back, and who is engaged in a battle at the moment, is of course the Clio. So down the inside of the TBR I go, who is definitely looking feisty in these early stages here in Seattle. And um, since Seattle is not as hard on tyres as Apricot Hill is, I would imagine there will probably be last pit stops. So this could very well be a race decided on pure pace. And the only thing I'm really hoping for is these AI do not rack me. Even though I'm pretty certain they probably will. Anyways, speed is becoming a contributing factor. I am hopefully confident enough to say I can possibly win this race. As of which I virtually set a 150 first lap as a result of all the carnage that was going on between myself, the TBR and the Zonda for the lead, but I have now taken the lead as we head up into this very sharp right-hander, and the Zonda does now take the second position away from the TBR, and the gap is now 1.4 seconds at the moment. So Trying to see if I can look for any space at all where I can correct my errors and officially I am locked in quite a battle at the moment for the lead. As of which both myself and the Pagani Zonda have opened up a little bit of an interval to the TBR but he is staying close to us, he is not letting us run like hell with this thing. Although it does now look like he is dropping back. So this is very much a two horse race. The Zonda has hit the outside wall coming off of that right hander before the chicane and officially I have now managed to escalate from that error and the gap is now currently two seconds. So, if these AI keep making the mistakes they're currently making, then I'm definitely on course to sweep in this race. And when I say this race, I do mean this one race, because I'm still not sure in knowing if I will win race 3 on pure pace with the tuning I currently have. But everything is looking good at the moment, and... The margin is slowly increasing to the Zonda, because obviously the Zonda is quite a strong competitor on these street circuits. And I think it's pretty much safe to say up to this point I probably do have the lead, but it will just depend on knowing if I can manage to hold on to this for probably the rest of the race, hopefully. So, just having to feather the throttle as we go through the bus stop, as of which I'm pretty sure that's a bus stop with those chicanes. And now heading up to the final chicane, a little bit of contact there with the outside wall, narrowly less narrowly missing the inside wall and officially I now set a new best lap by under one and a half seconds and the gap on lap four is now four seconds so I'm slowly increasing the interval as we go along. I'm trying to limit the fuck ups as much as I can and as we now head over these shitty jumps and through the right hand uh, going through in third gear so I do not slide into the outside wall and officially 
The gap is now under five seconds. And this thing is still being very, very, very loose. But I am at least able to control it. Or at least make its moods more tranquil when I head through these corners in third gear. At least I think tranquil is the word I'm looking for. Anyways, once again entering the bus stop section. And I now head through the final sector and had to lift there for the hairpin or else I would have hit the outside wall and my lap times are getting pretty much faster and faster every lap so I think it's fair to say since I took the lead I am slowly increasing my margins. Still getting oversteer here and there but again I am managing to prove of course that this car can win and once I officially have the correctional balance with this thing I can officially prove of course that this thing is worthy of clinching victory. At least, that's what I think it's worthy of. Also furthermore, gap is now 7.6 seconds, so... Margins between myself and the Zonda at the moment are definitely increasing. And I think it's fair to say that, as I would have expected in the professional league, his AI are pretty much strung out. Because obviously, rubber banding is not quite as strong, like I've said before, in the professional league in comparison to the beginner and amateur leagues. And as of which, the gap is now 8.1 seconds and I'm still encountering as I head through the chicane once again, and set a new purple lap time. And by that I mean I'm basically setting magenta sections lap after lap. At least I think it's magenta sections. Anyways, lap 6, and officially heading through the very sharp 90 degree right-hander, as of which I also just saw the Space Needle there in the background, here in Seattle. And the gap is now pretty much 11.4 seconds now to the Pagani Zonda, who is not looking like he will challenge me for the lead. All I really have to do now is just hold on to my interval and hope, of course, that I can manage to win this. So, heading through these quirky little chicanes here. Just how you think they're quirky. And entering. the final right-hander before we enter the chicane and once again for the sixth time running I officially set a another purple lap time and whilst I am doing this the Clio is trying to see if he can mount a challenge on the Tommy Kyra which at the moment is basically the closest baton on track as for the rest of the field up to this point, I would say they're pretty much strung out on the lines, if you want my complete opinion of what I think is going on in this race. And 
I am pretty much a quarter of a minute clear of the Zonda now because it is now 15 seconds to the Zonda which is equivalent to a quarter of a whole minute. The margins are still continuing to increase at the moment. And we now head through the bus stop section once again. And once again, crashing into the outside wall, even though obviously not with the fender, not with the front end. And I am still continuing to set purple lap times, as of which that is now the seventh time in a row I've set a purple lap time. So I'm literally decimating the rest of the field at the moment. Although I don't think each of my laps are going to be a new personal best lap. Because I think I would probably need to be lucky if that was going to happen. But again, it's not impossible, I don't think. But the only thing I can really do at the moment is just continue to run my race and hope, of course, that I do not do anything stupid. Because this could still change if I fuck this up in a big way. It has happened before, and even then, admittedly leading the race in the final moments, I have made those mistakes before. But at the moment, it doesn't look like I'm going to be under threat from this AI as we now head through the bus stop section once again, through both of these quirky little chicanes. Yeah. I think quirk is the word I'm looking for. And we now head up through the chicane once again. The straight arrow is for the pit lane. And officially this is where my fastest lap streak ends. So for seven times in a row I set pretty much purple lap after purple lap. Basically. That is how much faster I was around the circuit in comparison to the AI. Although, fortunately for me at least, I am still continuing to extend my margins. So, I think it's fair to say, in comparison to my loss at Apricot Hill, this race is certainly a shitload of a lot easier because I am already pretty much under 25 seconds clear of the Zonda, so this race in comparison to Apricot Hill pretty much a shitload of a lot easier is my only real response. this I am pretty certain even if I do make a mistake before the final lap I will probably still have plenty of time to get out of the wall and somehow eventually manage to put myself up into victory lane. Anyways, final lap and officially the gap is now pretty much 25 and a half seconds as we head through the happen now for the final time here in Seattle and where this very much looks like it is going to be my winning lap. As we now head over the jumps once again, is very much San Francisco style jumps if you ask me, because they do have those in San Francisco. And officially, it does look like I am going to overlap the Clio here in Seattle. But depending on knowing if I'll overlap the Tommy Cairo or not, that I don't think is going to happen. But 
With the likes of the Clio Abide, I would say... The Tommy Kyra probably will finish this race on the lead lap, although officially, I would say it is more or less likely the Thai will finish a lap ahead of the Renault Clio. Just so I do not have to wait for him to finish, anyways. Rounding out the final right-hander and heading up to the chicane once again. Once again, stick into the inside curb, a little bit of outside contact, and there we go. I emerge with victory in Seattle, and the Clio has also just finished. And so, all we have to do now is wait for the rest of these AI to finish. Which is going to take a while, considering how far behind the Tommy Kai Red is, but... Yeah, let's wait for everybody else to finish. He finally finished. The Tommy Kyra has finally finished. So the Zonda in the end finished in second by 30 and a half seconds, then it was the TBR in third, followed by the Honda NSX Type S. The Tommy Kyra finished an eventual fifth, less than two minutes behind me, and then precisely one lap behind me was the Renault Clio. Anyways, final race, and we are heading to Tokyo. And hopefully we can probably sweep two out of three races. And we pretty much get the same field again. Except for saying this time we are on a longer street course, and also one that is more decisive on speed. So I think this is probably where I may win, but we shall wait and see. Except for saying that this time we have the Elise in this race, in comparison to when we previously had the Tommy Kyra. So basically what we have in this field is the TBR, the Renault Clio, oh, correction, the Elise replaced the NSX for this race, yeah. I just had to correct myself there. It's actually the NSX which the Elise has replaced for this race. And down the inside of the Elise I go, and already... I can now say I am up into the second position. All I have to do now is see how exactly I will get up to first position. Because since Tokyo is long is a longer circuit, I would imagine it probably is harder on tires. So I probably would imagine there are going to be some pit stops during this race, but dependent on knowing if the Zonda will make the pit stops or not, that remains to be seen. Anyways. I'm hopeful in saying I will manage to win this race pretty much on pit stops and not necessarily on pit pace. Considering obviously the Zonda does have the superior acceleration, but again, because of how long the front stretch is here in Tokyo, I'm pretty certain he will not be far from reaching his max speed. And this is officially where I will manage to gain the advantage. Because I would imagine by now he probably has hit his top speed. And officially I am closing in. And down the inside of the Zonda I go, we both end up making contact, even though obviously the Pagani got the threshold on that one because my foot's up. And contact is made again, this time through the left-hander, but fortunately I don't think too much damage was done. 
even though obviously that's not the way I was wanting to take the lead. But now that I am officially in the lead, all I can really do now is basically just try and see if I can extend my interval. Even though the Zonda has looked quicker through the corners, so I'm pretty certain he probably will close up as we head through each of these corners. The Zonda has got the preferable handling, but at the same time I have the preferable speed. And that is the main reason why I am managing to stay ahead of the Zonda. And we are having quite a scrap at the moment for the first position, as in which this time we have the Elise in this race instead of the Honda. And officially, besides that, the rest of the field from Seattle is pretty much the same. So the Zonda has the preferable grip through the corners because he is more nimble in the mile. I am quicker down the straights because officially I have some long ass gears in this thing. Effectively, that is the main reason why I'm managing to stay ahead. And the Zonda is pretty much right where I want him, in my rear view. So, I think it's fair to say victory, if he does make a pit stop, is pretty much guaranteed. Possibly. So the reason why I chose to use the Mustang is because, well, again, I don't think anybody has actually considered using the Mustang for this event. I could be wrong, but obviously I don't think anybody has officially considered using the Mustang for such an event. Anyways, gap is now 7 tenths to the... Sonder, so again, the corners are benefiting him, but obviously the straights are benefiting me. And I think I cocked up those corners just a little bit there, but I'm pretty certain since the Zonda has the acceleration without the speed, I'm pretty certain I will manage to easily retake the lead on pure speed. Obviously, speed is the one thing the Azonda does not have, and obviously, my theory is proven correct. He does not have the speed to hold on to the lead, and officially, once again, I do manage to retake the lead. Although, I'm pretty certain this probably will be a close race, because it seems unlikely for the Zonda to pit, considering, obviously, what happened at Apricot Hill. Because even though there were pit stops, Seattle had no pit stops. But obviously, I still beat the. But obviously, I still beat the Zonda because obviously, I was fucking up the course a lot less than the Zonda was. And also, furthermore, on that day, I basically had the quicker race car at Seattle, so effectively. My car at the moment is running pretty good, although I'm pretty certain tyre wear probably will play a large role in the outcome of this race. And the gap is now less than a tenth, and covering the inside line, but again it doesn't matter because the Zonda just shoots around the outside because obviously he has stronger handling. Unfortunately, once we head down the front stretch, I am pretty confident I will probably retake the lead, as of which I dart myself down the inside, running very wide on the exit there, but managing to defend my position, and speed once again being my contributor, as we now head onwards to lap 5. 
So even though the Zonda is literally able to cement me through the corners, the truth is, I'm able to get my part of the infliction on the Zonda. down the streets, because coincidentally that is exactly where my beneficial factor is. Because even though I do not have the handling to get through each of these corners, at the very least I can say I do have the speed, as I just see the sun there, but I do have the speed to help me survive the streets. Even then, of course, if my quartering speeds are rather sucky in comparison to his older. Because he is definitely able to close up through the corners compared to me. Probably because he must have an aerodynamic chassis or something. Well, I don't really know a lot about cars, but. One thing I do know is that obviously the Pagani has definitely got his fair share of aerodynamics. And I'm pretty certain that is exactly what's helping him keep up with me through the corners. So this race is not over by any means. If that's what you're thinking. Meanwhile, I now set a new fastest lap by pretty much one and a half seconds. Gap is now two seconds to the Zonda. Pretty certain that gap will decrease again once we get through to the middle sector. Well, the middle as well as the third sector, because that is exactly where the Zonda is proving quicker than me. Because he has a lot more handling than I do. But fortunately, because there are more straights on this course than there are corners. That's officially the main reason why I am managing to hold on to the lead. Because even though my cornering speeds are quite bad, the truth is my acceleration speed down the streets is pretty good. Effectively, that is exactly what is managing to keep me ahead of the Zonda. And I am still continuing to slide a lot, as I would expect myself to do. But this time, heading through the corner in fourth gear, for some reason. Probably because I'm just lazy, but whatever. Anyways. Down the main street we go once again, as I'm just itching my right eyebrow, but officially down the front stretch once again, and setting another purple lap, as the gap is now 4 seconds to the Zonda, so he's not giving up too much of his interval to me, but obviously I think he's pretty much realised that his tyres are not durable enough to keep up with me, and officially, I think it's pretty much fair to say, at this point in the race, I will probably go onwards to win with relative ease by the time we get down to the final lap, if he pits in for tyres. But obviously, I don't think tyre degradation is going to be as much of a problem for his AI, because obviously this is only a 10 lap race, and I'm pretty certain the Zonda probably won't have any major issues, but meanwhile, if you are me, then obviously you will probably need to consider quite a few factors if you are eventually going to manage. To hold on to 
the race lead and then eventually emerge victorious. Which is what I'm hoping will happen, but we'll just have to wait and see. Meanwhile, I go purple once again, because I've now improved by pretty much half a tenth. So my lap times are getting quicker and quicker, like they did in Seattle, but obviously I'm pretty certain the consistency streak will not be as long, because I set purple laps for pretty much seven straight laps in Seattle, and the gap is now pretty much 6.6 .6 seconds to the Zonda. So not quite the Devil's numbers, unfortunately, but... Or not quite the Devil's number, unfortunately, but... Officially... I am still continuing to lead this thing, and like I did in Seattle, once the race has officially settled down, I've just managed to hold on and take a relatively comfortable lead. So, the margin is now building, his tyres must be wearing off if he is falling behind, and officially, the Mustang is now very much on its way to clinching victory for the third race. As of which I can of course hear that supercharged 8 cylinder engine and heading across the line once again the Fastest lap streak ends as I expected it to, and officially making contact with the outside wall. Gap is now 7 seconds to the Pagana Zonda, and the only thing I'm really trying to do at the moment is just hold on to the rear end without exciting too much. Anyways. 8.5 seconds now to the Zonda, so... Nothing major is really going on up to this point. I'm pretty certain a win by the time we start the final lap is probably guaranteed unless I hit the wall somewhere, but... Officially, it does look like, unless anything goes majorly wrong, then obviously I am pretty certain that I will probably win this race. So the Zonda still proving to be quicker in the corners, but obviously he is not proving to be as beneficial down the straights. That is exactly how I have been managing to lead this race for as long as I have. Anyways, final lap, and I narrowly set a new PB, and this time the Zonda does pit, so subsequently, tyre wear, as I predicted, more of an issue here in Tokyo than it was at Apricot Hill, and officially, that has pretty much gifted me the win, as what he thinks. So pretty much, no matter what happens now, in terms of minor mistakes, I probably have already won this race, because of me putting on the drawing tyres, even though tyre wear is still proving to be quite a problem for the heavyweights. And it doesn't look like I'm going to overlap the clear this time. Because even though I was dominating Seattle, I'm pretty certain this time I probably won't overlap the clear because I think I'm a little bit too far behind the clear this time to officially get a run at overlapping, but 
I will try my hardest, even though I will, of course, I try my hardest to also keep it clean. And dragging on the outside wall there by mistake, but fortunately, I am managing to keep a hold of the car, and it looks like right before the finish line, that is exactly what I'm going to do. And it doesn't matter because the Cleo pits. Now, I pretty much have to wait probably 20 seconds for them to finish, and there we go. I win! And I just decimated that final lap, because I was 1.3 seconds quicker on that final lap. Anyways, let's now wait for the rest of these AI to finish. And the Clio just finished, so that's one thing I don't have to worry about. Anyways, let's now wait for the rest of these AI to finish. There's the Tommy Kyra. Alright, so in the end of that, I pretty much won this race by 35 seconds over the Zonda as a result of his pit stop at the end of the penultimate lap. The TVR Griffith finished in third less than a minute behind me. Then in fourth, 14 seconds behind the TVR, it was the Elise, and then in fifth position, it was the Tommy Kyra, and then, well, pretty much a minute and a half behind me, and then at the back, by a lap, it was once again the Clio. And, yep, I do have a replay saved, and officially, it is now prize car time. Excuse me. And what prize can we win this time? We win ourselves a Pagani Zonda. Although, I am wondering, is this the C12 or is it the C12S model? I think it's the C12S. Judging by what I can see here, but... Yeah, that's our prize car. A Pagani Zonda C12S. And let's now check this bad boy out. So, had a little bit of trouble at Imcot Hill following my slick tyre gamble, but once I put on the super slicks, I pretty much dominated these races. And officially, let's now go and check out our prize car. And win ratio is still pretty much the same, and we are now 45.6% in completion with this game, so still about 54.4% left to go, and this is our prize car, the Pagani Zonda C12S. And again, with less than 550 horsepower, I'm pretty certain I will definitely have some usage for this thing, and to those of you who are GT3 veterans, you will probably know exactly what the hell it is I'm going on about when I say that. Alright, anyways, I'm done. Okay, I'm done. So that's our prize car from the professional race of NA Sport, the Pagani Zonda C12S. And next time, we shall be doing the professional race of turbo sports. And as for what car I will use for that, well, you will just have to wait and find out. But until then, stay tuned for more of Gran Turismo 3.